Good afternoon and welcome to Question Time with the Party Wall Guy. Um, my name is Dale Gujral. I'm the Party Wall Guy. It's two o'clock, just past two o'clock. So let's begin. Every Tuesday afternoon, we'll be having a question time regarding Party Wall, the Party Wall Act, and any issues you've got regarding uh, the Party Wall Act questions. So let's begin. A quick run through housekeeping. Let's have a quick run through housekeeping. Um, this is a um, Zoom webinar, it's not a Zoom call. So that's why you can only see the screen and, and my video, but feel free to keep feeding me questions. I'm gonna go through questions. This is mostly a question and answer session. Um, there's no scheduled fire alarm. If you get a fire alarm, it's a real thing. My exit's over here. I'm not sure where your exit is and I can't help you with your bathrooms and coffees either but hopefully we won't need any of that. It's only a half an hour session. Okay, uh, on your phone, if you're watching this through your phone, you'll have various options at the bottom. Uh, we'll go through the hand and the question sessions in a, uh, options in a minute. This is, this is what your phone will look like. And at the bottom, I'm, I'm just gonna put this, um, this um, spotlight on. Right. Okay, so, this is your mic if you when when you speak to put your questions in um unmute your mic this is raise hands uh, and i'm going to go through that in a minute there's also a question and uh, answer bit so keep feeding your questions in uh if you get an incoming call on your telephone when when you finish with that call if you're watching this webinar on your telephone this this session when you put it down we we find that, that your phone might cut off the audio so it's simply a case of going out and coming back in and that'll, that'll get your audio going back, uh, back, in, uh, back in place so you'll be able to listen to me. Please try and keep it on mute while the meeting's on. Obviously raise your hands and put questions in and then we'll, we'll try and get you on there to ask any questions. Um, if you lose, uh, sorry, if, if we lose Wi-Fi, we have a backup Wi-Fi. It'll take a minute or so to get us back on there. Um, and just just stay on the line, uh, stay stay with us. We'll get we'll get back on there, and um, get reconnected. It takes about a minute or so. And if both Wi-Fi's are down, well, we've got a little problem. We've got a bigger problem. Uh, if your Wi-Fi goes down, you should be able to your your phone or your device usually auto connects when you're um, when you're on a webinar. So just stay or move around, uh, and it will automatically reconnect. Uh, there will be recordings of this um, question and answer session. It'll be on our YouTube channel, 1996 Party Wall. It takes about a week or so to get there. So bear that in mind. Um, I have written a book in the past. There it is. Um, don't buy it yet. Uh, if you come across it on Amazon, save your money for the moment. Um, and there's a little gift at the end of the session, which I'll go through again. And I'm going to go through question and answer. So, uh, element now so if you if you look on your phone or your device you'll see a Q&A bit as soon as you touch that put any questions in I'll, I'll come to your questions uh, as soon as I can and on your hand hand raising the hands section let, let's have a little practice on that so we've got a little hand option there uh, quick show of hands if you've come across the party wall act before Excellent and brilliant. Uh, show of hands if you haven't come across it before. And quick show of hands if you're not going to put your hand up, regardless of whatever I say. So thank you for that. Uh, let's have a quick intro. Uh, quick intro to myself. I'm I'm Dil Gujral, Chief Surveyor at 1996 Party Wall. We're a specialist party wall company and. Um, we're here to answer the questions. So I'm gonna, if you, if you can keep feeding me your questions, I'll, I will try and come to them. I'm gonna go through a little basic outline beforehand. Sorry, the reason I'm looking on my right is I've got a bigger screen here, so try not to do that. Uh, keep feeding in your questions and I'll, I'll come to them as, as they occur to you. So a basic outline of, of, um, of the party wall process. Why take the process at all? So first of all, 
undertaking the process means that the building owner, the person doing the building works, gets to take a schedule of condition of the adjoining owner's property, and this protects them from false and malicious claims from adjoining owners. So a number of times we've gone in and we've discovered that there's existing damage on the adjoining owner's property. Had they not carried out a survey, the, the, the parties doing the building work would have got the blame for it. Um, now, we're going to address this in the first question as well. Um, the other problem, if you don't take, undertake the party will process and complete it properly, your works may be stopped midstream. So that you could be in the middle of your work, you've got builders on site, and you have to stop while the party will uh, award is sorted out and all, all, all the process is completed. And for project terms, that's not good project management, A. Eh? And most of all, it's very expensive to do it in midstream when you've perhaps got penalties going on with your builders and, and you're trying to sort it out. So definitely a situation to avoid. And we've, we've had projects whereby the works have come to a complete standstill. We're doing, we're, we're trying to sort out the party wall uh, issues and uh, the sites on uh, had to come to a stop. We've had houses where the roof's been taken off and they've literally been been in uh, been in their property with no roof on top or trenches in the back. So it, it's definitely it's an avoidable situation that should be avoided. Uh, as a building owner trying uh, ca carrying out a project, it's your responsibility. You can't delegate it to an architect or a project manager. As the person who owns the building or the entity. Uh, it's one of these laws that are strict in terms of application, a little bit like health and safety. So the buck stops with the owners. Um, and it's it's a good idea. Uh, one of the main things to do is to take the process because should you get into an injunction situation, that incurs extra costs. It's definitely to be avoided. And it is the law. There's a definite onus on the building owner to undertake the process. I'm going to discuss this further in the first question we've got. So just a quick outline of who should look at it. It's people who are doing residential extensions. It only applies to England and Wales. Homeowners, and you might have ho you might own residential property in terms of the council as part of the council stock. So those, I would say, are probably under property development. So it could be a scenario where you've got a property, it's a council housing stock, and you're trying to update to refurb or do um, various extensions. It could be that you need to bring, uh, the, the current residents have gone into hospital, they need an extension to facilitate adaptations and their new means of living in terms of requirements for uh, ground floor uh, bedrooms and bathrooms. So it could be various reasons you're doing it. And, and, it, and to the other extent, it extends to commercial projects as well. Um, there's also uh, a group of people, financiers, that need to be aware of the act because it, it, it can delay the repayment of their loans. And if you're a developer, it, it can have an impact on your credibility in terms of repaying a loan. So that, that's one of the reasons. Uh, as property managers or investors, so where you're working for a local authority or your property manager in charge of looking after a portfolio, could be you're an estate agent and you, you're there to manage the property. You need to be aware of the act because uh, there'll be notices being served on the property you're looking after and you need to know how to act on the adjoining owner side. And lastly, but not least, it, it, it's the architects. And the, the, these guys are the linchpin because on the building owner side, usually the architects are the first ones to introduce the party wall act. People are not aware of it. So it, it's always good to um, focus on, on how you bring this how you bring this piece of legislation to the, your client's attention. I'm just going to do a very quick run through on basic terms. So you have the building owner. These are the guys who are going to do the works. It could be a corporate body. It could be an individual or a partnership. Uh, they, they're the ones that serve the notice. It's served on the adjoining owner. Now, in adjoining owners, there's multiple classes. You have the freeholders. You could have multiple freeholders, depending on how your property is situated. You have leaseholders. Now, these are leaseholders of more than one year. 
and there is a little gray area where not exactly a gray area there's a propensity to slip here where there's leaseholders of between one and seven years that are not registered on the land registry so the this group can fall through the cracks but it's important that to be aware that these the uh, this group is notifiable and that in terms of um, you have uh, scenario where councils are rent, renting on a long-term basis, they're responsible for giving the property back in the same condition so that they become notifiable under uh, leasehold owners of more than one year. There's another group that has right to receive profits. These could be trusts or where you've got a deal that's you're in, into a uh, lease purchase lease option. So they're, they're the group that come under right to receive profits. And finally, you have the group where you're contracted to buy land. So if your neighbor exchanges, the new party becomes a notifiable owner, so that therefore they're notifiable under the act because they've exchanged, they're under a contract to buy land, uh, buy land or property. <clears throat> Excluded from that group are short, short hold tenants, council tenants, um, and also mortgage companies. So just a quick run through the process. It starts by the building owner issuing a notice. This is stage one. Uh, a lot of the times people refer to this as the a party wall agreement. They say we've sent a party wall agreement, been rejected by the neighbors. That's wrong, that's incorrect terminology. It's not, it's not an agreement. It's a party wall notice and this is how the process starts. Stage two is decided by the adjoining owner who then replies to this notice and makes a choice. Um, so they can choose to have a schedule of condition, which a schedule of condition is very similar to when you're renting a car, whereby a photographic survey is taken of the property, your neighbor's property, the adjoining property, before works begin. And this gives you a baseline of, um, this gives you a baseline of the condition of the property. So to avoid false and malicious claims on, on the, on the parties doing the work, the building owners. Uh, award is a legal agreement which sets out rights and responsibilities of, of both sides. And that's, that can be termed as, as the party wall agreement. Uh, the, the actual terminology is a party wall award. Uh, it also sets out, it sets, it's a legal document setting out rights and responsibilities. Also, there's a procedure in there of action to be taken if 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 there's damage and 99% of the cases there's no damage but it's a dispute resolution procedure to sort sort out any problems so i'm going to try and connect the uh, building owners perspective in terms of we're all familiar with with various types of projects and one one of the things that we get asked uh, we we realize that the act talks about walls and foundations and, and notices, but it doesn't refer to projects as such. So what we want to try and do is to map it onto um, various projects we're all familiar with. So in residential settings, it's rare extensions, loft conversions, um, removal of chimney breasts, possibly stacks as well, doing basements and porches. So I've gone through some of these in a very, on my various webinars. They'll be on our uh, YouTube um, channel as well shortly. But just to give you an idea, the, the type of project, the Act talks about section numbers. Everybody thinks about projects. So we need to connect these two up. So each project can have more than one section number, which means it's notifiable under the Party Wall Act. So we've got a great question that's come in. I'm just going to check. Um, see if um, if the person sending this question would like to answer it ask it in um, in person see if he's on. Uh, no they're not on so um, yeah and then I've got a question so I'm gonna try and see if Deepak would like to come on Deepak hi can you hear me hi Deepak can you hear me hello Dill Okay, well, you, Hello. you've got your hand up, so if you'd like to uh, answer a question, please uh, just 
interrupt and sp speak up. So, oh, uh, no, okay, you don't want to ask a question. Fine, uh, j we're just testing the hand thing. So, sorry about that technology. Right, so we've had a question, great question come in uh, just this afternoon. So I've, I've written it out, in, and the question relates to enforcement. So I've written it out, and I'm going to go through it each bit, bit by bit. So the fir first question is, I was informed that should work start such as digging and footings. Um, I'm just going to move some screens now. Okay. Right, putting it, it's too late to enter into an agreement. So if if someone's, uh, and it relates to a second point, this the, uh, we've, we've had made, uh, re uh, you did say retrospective uh, agreements not possible. So, okay. So when I say retrospective, by that I mean when the, when the notifiable works have been completed, the lofts have been completed, it was built a few years ago, and we often get calls from uh, the owners who are, who, are tr who are going to sell this um, project, say a house with a loft that's been taken place. For whatever reason, it might have been before the party wall uh, agreement, or they haven't followed the process. The works are complete, and they get a, they're, they're asked by the solicitor to provide a party wall agreement. It's not retrospectively possible because once the notifiable works are complete then you can't go back and do the agreement because your project's finished now and and and, and i'm going to go through it point by point as 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 asked so um this viewer said this this says to me that the party wall act is not the law as ignoring it uh, is not lawful penalties or enforcement so the enforcement for the Party Wall Act is taken up by the neighbour who then takes an injunction to stop the works. It can also affect claim for damages should there be damages. And it definitely is the law. There's a whole act around it. It is called the Party, I'm going to get this right, the Party Wall Etc. Act 1996. So it's definitely an area of law. Now, in terms of penalties, just because there's, there are actually sections in there that if you disobey the section or, or you put a de um, section 16 is one of those sections whereby if you go against the section you can it, you can be prosecuted for uh, criminal penalties so just to reiterate, reiterate it is the law it's definitely an act of parliament and the enforcement part of the enforcement is that it's undertaken by the neighbors and they take out an injunction against the uh, works because they're the ones that are going to be affected. In terms of retrospective enforcement, it's not like planning law whereby if you put a building up, you haven't got planning permission, the authorities come and enforce it. So it, it's slightly different in, in those terms. And the authorities, when enforcing planning law, can knock your building down. So it's a different type of enforcement. And the section, uh, the next part of the question is, to my knowledge, uh, should this happen, then it falls to the to the neighbour to take the uh, court proceedings to stop works at their own cost. So yes, that's correct. It is down to the neighbour to enforce it. And we do, neighbours do enforce it, corporate bodies enforce it. So enforcement's taking place by neighbours. And there's a question of cost by the time it goes to court, they'll incur costs and, and works may be completed. The, the issue you've got here is when building works are about to start, when neighbors say do a very small extension, right, got a question coming in, so I'll, 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 I'll look at that in a minute. Um, so when, when, when you put in an application for either permitted development or planning application, not only are the neighbors notified, they're also start getting letters from other party wall surveyors and those are marketing letters which which they're trying to get themselves elected as joining owners joining owner surveyors and though those will give give your neighbors a heads up and this this can cause neighbors to call go to court and enforce the party wall act and take out um take out um an, an injunction so 
this this is where my this is how it's enforced. Um, there isn't a party wall police yet. So just for for doubting. And 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 the last part of this question is. Uh, neighbours would be very reluctant to do it as they'd incur costs. Yes, they will incur some costs, but the injunction is given very quickly by judges. Uh, you can literally walk down to the court, fill out, fill out, fill out a form. The costs are, two, are about £241 last time I came across it. Uh, you, may, you may well have official planning, you may well have building control approval in place, but you still need to get party war. So each piece of law operate separately. So getting planning permission doesn't mean that you've got building control. Just like you get planning permission, you get building control, you then have to do party wall if it's applicable. You may have rights of light, you may have easement issues, you may have various other issues. So every piece of law is, is on its own merit and in its own box. Um, hopefully that answers your question. I've got another question come in. I'm going to read this. I have a current project where we're dealing with a party wall matters for our client. Actually, I'm going to try and um, uh, try and get the, the participant on board and see if they'd like to answer it. Daniel, Daniel, I, I think I've unmuted you. Really? Really? Uh, would you like to ask the question yourself? Oh, okay. Um, if anybody li like to ask a question, uh, feel free. So I'm going to read it out. Okay. Question from Daniel. Um, I have a current party wall. Uh, I have a current project whereby we are dealing with the party wall matters for a client and served rele relevant notices to the adjoining owners. One neighbor consented and acknowledged the notices. The other neighbor dissented, but agreed to appoint, agreed the appointment of our agreed surveyor. We are currently in the process of formulating an agreement that struck an award. The document where the client has, in, has instructed the contractor on site, who is carrying out the works and has reach the stage at which the, these items relating to the party wall matters. What should we do next to ensure that our clients, that our clients cease his work until the agreement's in place? So what, what I understand from this has happened is they've done the notices, they've instructed a surveyor, uh, for whatever reason the surveyor's uh, carrying on uh, doing the um, necessary paperwork, and what should we do that uh, ensure that a client sees his work? Well, if you're the project manager or you're the building, so one piece of advice, you should try and make sure the party will uh, award and paperwork's in place before work start, because that can cause problems in terms of the work. The builders are busy trying to build work, uh, build the project, they're getting in the way, you reach a point where you can't progress further and you haven't had the party wall uh, paperwork in place. So it's important to make sure it's in place beforehand, before work start is the best approach. You've got to stop works until, it, until it's finished, and, until the party wall paperwork is completed, the process is completed. Great, got another question coming in. What happens if a building owner starts work without notifying the neighbours first? So. If they start works in a loft scenario, you're going to get scaffolding going up. The neighbors are going to get pretty worried and they're going to say to the neighbors, where's my party wall award? Now, this, this has several implications. It, it means that you're on the back foot as, as someone trying to do works. If you try and do, do the works, try and proceed, the neighbor will take out, and it can take out an injunction. This will give you extra costs, delay your project further. It, the other thing is when you when you put your scaffolding up or you're preparing for work, preparing the site for works, the neighbours then ask you for a party wall agreement or a notice. You're on the back foot, and they're less likely to agree or consent to your works than if you'd approached them in the first place. 
So by all means, avoid getting yourself into that scenario and understand that it's your responsibility to make sure that the party wall process is completed. You can't say to the judge when you end up in court, I didn't know about it. That doesn't wash with judges. So make sure it's completed. You're going to get delays, you're going to get extra costs, and it's going to make your project difficult. And most of all, it's going to cause a bad relationship with your neighbours because they're going, to, they, they're going to believe and think that you're trying to wiggle out of doing something properly and, and doing it by the book. So it creates a bad creates a bad wide there. So avoid doing that, whatever you do. Um, I'm just checking on the time. I want to be mindful of your time. So great questions. Keep them coming in. I'm going to go through a little question I've had before in terms of, let me see. I've got, I think someone wants to ask a question. So I'm going to see if I can unmute them. Right. If you'd like to ask a question, raise your hands. If not, please lower them. Oh, okay. So nobody wants to ask a question. Great. Um, yeah, th th this is a live session, by the way. Yeah. Um, okay. So I'm going to go through outhouses. Now, we've had a number of questions, and, and I think the interest on the outhouses is currently taking place because people are more and more people are working from home. They've realized that it would be nice to have a... It, it'll be... No, sorry, I'm just... Um, not the right video. So they realized it'll be nice to have an outhouse to have, have, as an office. Uh, you're having to work from home and that's gonna become an in increasing trend. Uh, let's have an office a, as an outhouse and you know, you're allowed to do that under law. So outhouses are causing a lot of questions at the moment and I'm just gonna go through the Party Wall Act and how it applies to outhouses. So, Quick reminder on section 6.1. I've been through this before, so let's just go through it again. Under section 6.1, if the building you're proposing uh, is within three meters of your net, or any part of it is within three meters horizontal distance of your adjoining owner's structure, this is a two-part test, and your, your foundations are going to a lower level than that of your neighbors, they're notifiable under section 6.1. And, and just to reiterate, it's any part here. So this was a question that somebody asked to clarify. So here's a little illustration. Again, two-part test within three meters and lower level. So these, these are houses. We could pretend they're outhouses, actually. So if you're digging, and you have to assume your neighbor's got some sort of projecting foundation, it's a distance from the edge of the foundation to the edge of your excavation. If that distance is less than three meters, that's test one. And test two, if it's a lower depth horizontally. So you're not digging underneath the building. This is a, uh, this is a vertical level. You're just digging below their, uh, their, their vertical level. So that, that's a lower level test. If you meet the, both of those two, they're notifiable. And just to make sure everybody understands it, the, the requirements for issuing a section six notice, this is the only section that requires plans and sections to go alongside a section six, uh, a note, the notice. So this is a section six notice. You need to show the site and the depth of any foundation, where you're digging and how deep you're gonna go. And also the building you're proposing to build and its site. Now, usually th this is somewhere in, this, this is in the planning application. There's some sort of planning drawings in the planning application. Uh, the depth, uh, the site of the excavation, you could show that by the outline of where you're, where you're gonna excavate. This is the bit that causes the most problems for architects. That they don't show an excavation or section. So it's a minor little detail. It's always good to have it along. That means you could serve a valid section six notice. So back to our, our house scenario. So we're building, that's our garden. We're proposing to build this outhouse in the back of our garden. And we're just bordering with four gardens just for, uh, just for a scenario. 
So in, in that case, if we're building in the back of our garden, there's no outbuildings next to it. We're not building on the line of junction. There's no notices required in this scenario. So let's go, let's go to the next scenario again, same scenario, except one of our neighbors has a shed and this shed's got a concrete slab as a found, that's constitutes a foundation. The neighbor to the rear right has a shed, but this shed rests on the ground and the neighbor directly behind us as an outhouse, but it's an old outhouse, so it's got shallow foundations. And if we're proposing to build here, in that case, this outhouse with shallow foundations are notified by under section 6.1. This uh, wooden shed, because it's got a concrete slab, and that slab constitutes a foundation, if it's within three meters, it's notifiable. Now, just to clarify, this shed that's resting on the ground, on the grass, doesn't have a foundation. That's not a, con uh, that's not a notifiable structure. So in this case, there's no notice to be issued here. Let, let me then now go into the line of junction versus the boundary. Line of junction is a section one notice. So this is a boundary and where you've got boundary between two properties, Hopefully the neighbors will respect the boundary. And if they go over, that's trespass, that's different area of element of law. We don't really deal with that. Where the lands meet on the ground level, that point is known as a line of junction. So that's your line of junction. Now, going back to our outhouse scenario, we could have, as previously, shed on the um, Shed with on the ground at the back, again outhouse with lower foundations. We've got section three applicable there. This neighbour's got, although they've got nothing in terms of um, building, so there's no section six notice there. Section six notice applicable here because they're they're lower than three meters. There is a section one notice which is building on the line of junction because what they're actually, what you're proposing to do is build right on the edge on the boundary, if you like. Now, section one is useful because it gives you rights to go on their land. Uh, that's been explained in previous seminars and I might do another one uh, later. So we need to, I'm not sure if this purple line's come out. This is where you, section one notice is, is applicable to this neighbor here. So you'd issue a section six notice here, section one notice here, and no notice is needed here. Now, with a section one notice, it's an automatic consent notice as with the table before, which means once you serve it 14 days later, if there's no, if there's no, um, no reply, it's automatically consented. So that is a saving grace of section one and it's the most helpful notice there. So that's just a quick outline of outbuildings. Hopefully that, helps to progress matters further. I'm just going to check if there's any more questions. Oh, wait. Um, yeah, I, I think that's all the questions answered. Um, as I said, we're going to try and keep these sessions very short and, 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 and quick. Just it's a weekly session. So keep your questions coming in. No polls there. Um, Please keep your questions coming in and you can ask the questions via email, um, uh, either by email or LinkedIn. Um, great to have your questions, just half an hour sessions. So that, that's almost the end of today's session. Ne next week, I'm gonna go through architects and how they can help you with the process. Um, and a quick message from our sponsors, if I, there, there is a gift for you there. Sorry, the thumbs going off. Um, there is a gift. If you go to my LinkedIn, there's, there's a guide on how to serve notices in the correct manner. Please pick that up. And we've got a question. We've got a message from our sponsors. Let, let's get Mr. Ranjit Singh on, who's um, 